episode of On Finding Peace. I'm Chris Shea, the host, and I'm glad that all of you are joining me once again. As we spend a brief moment talking about different ways that we can work in our lives to try to find that inner peace for which most of us long, and hopefully come up with some positive and workable solutions to help define that. I feel like more information about me and my services, uh, my main website is www.lifesjourneyblog.com. So you can uh, feel free to go on over there and you'll find out all the information uh, about all my services and speaking engagements, podcasts, etc. One of the aspects that I wanted to talk about today is to follow up from the last podcast that I worked on, where we talked very briefly about what mindfulness is. And in talking about mindfulness, I brought up the topic of how our past and our future seem to work together uh, within mindfulness and, and how they approach that uh, aspects of our lives when we talk about living in the present. Because when I live in the present moment, it's in that moment when I feel what I feel and simply experience what I'm experiencing. Uh, when you look at mindfulness, we say that we live in the present moment non judgmentally. So, what do I mean by non judgmentally? When we look at non judgmentally, what we're saying is that we don't put a value judgment on the present moment. That what we do with the moment is simply experience it. The minute that we say this is a good moment, a bad moment, the minute that we label our emotion, anything that we do to put a term or a definition, a label as to what is happening, we have now judged what's going on around us. The issue with that is that when we judge what's going on around us, we're going to lose a bit of the experience because in our judging, we've already made that notion within ourselves as to what we feel is happening. The problem is that may not be true. We may not be really feeling or experiencing the moment the way that we think we are. And if we spend some time just feeling what we feel before we label it as good, bad, or otherwise, we might come up with a different experience. For an example, and this is just a basic uh, example, but you know, let's say that you're not really a, a baseball fan. Um, and I'll bring that up because that's true for me. I like sports, but baseball, I just don't understand. Not intellectually, I don't understand. I don't understand why people sit around and watch somebody just kind of hit a ball and run to a base and then stand around. Part of that judgment for me, and that is my judgment, but part of that judgment comes from my own childhood because when I was really little, and I don't remember the years, but I was put into a little league and that was fine. And, you know, so I had my mitt and, you know, we went to practices and we did what we did and it was kind of fun. I mean, you're a kid, so what's wrong with going outside and hitting a ball around and running around? I was placed in the outfield. Now, from what I know of Major League Baseball, if you're placed in the outfield, especially like center field, that's a pretty good position because, you know, that's going to be important for your big hits and for stopping home runs. And, uh, you know, so that's that's a good spot. When you're five and six or whatever my young age was, center field is not the place you want to be. When you think about kids that age, even the best kid that we played against, 
the hardest hit they would have might get that ball over to second base if we were lucky. My time in center field was spent staring at the clouds, staring at the grass, picking the dandelions. That was my baseball experience. So when somebody talks about baseball or says, let's go to a baseball game, part of me unconsciously goes back to that moment and, and thinks to myself, you know what? That's boring. I don't get it. So the minute that somebody invites me to a game and I actually go to a game, I'm going with those preconceived notions. Now, what I'm talking about in non-judgmentally, if I were to go to that game and consciously not reflect on my experience, but to really sit there and watch everything that's going on, not to be distracted, but to actually watch the game, pay attention to the stats, who's hitting, who's catching, who's in what positions, what does this hit mean, what are these you know, signals mean from uh, the coaching staff and from the catcher. If I spent time doing that, I might, and I stress might, learn to like the game. But if I continue to judge the game, I'm never going to like the game. Now, that's just a base example just to, you know, help to explain what I'm saying. Because for many of us in our lives, we're not dealing with a baseball game. But in our preconceived notions, what we're dealing with is not unsimilar, if that's a word. Maybe I just made up a word. But it's not unsimilar to my experience with baseball. Because that's how we experience life. As I mentioned in my previous podcast, when we looked at mindfulness, you know, and I talked about our lives today, how I think and feel and act, are products of our history, it's products of our past. So when we're dealing with the products of our past, we have already made those judgments. I think it's very important for us in mindfulness to pay attention to what our judgments are and to focus on the present moment, especially doing so non-judgmentally. Because for me, I think that's where we're going to end up finding our inner peace. When we let go of our judgments and when we look at an experience what is actually going on around us. When we start to feel what we feel and simply take that in, then we're going to begin to learn life around me and therefore learn a bit about me. Because just as in our past, all of the experiences that I have had, all of the decisions that I've made, all of the consequences that I've gone through, all of those things have shaped and formed my opinions and my judgments. If I sit in meditation or just in my daily life, taking in all that is going on around me, that also is going to begin to influence my life. So depending what we're going through in life, it might be important to just sit still and listen to nothing. To sit still and hear the buzz and whirl of a fan in, in the distance that we might not have heard before. Over time, we get more attuned to looking at the small things, to noticing the small things. And the more often that we get attuned to that and can work that, what we'll then encounter is that we see the small things within ourselves. That's when we can find what is in ourselves that we need to make different, that we need to change, so that when we make that change, we are doing it in such a way that we are mindful. We're doing it in such a way that we are consciously making a thoughtful change. 
these are concepts that I think are somewhat easy, somewhat common sense. But when we put these into practice for many people, and I'll include myself in this, it's not easy at all. What this takes is daily practice and daily failure and daily practice again. This is what my podcast is about. This is what my writings and my counseling is about. How do we do this? How do we find that inner peace? I really don't think it's that far away. I think we all have that. It's just how do we individually find that? So in future episodes, those are some of the things that we'll be addressing. And if anyone has suggestions as to topics or if anyone has any questions, you can feel free to uh, you know, send me a message. Uh, again, if you go over to my website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com, uh, you'll have all of the contact information there, all of the social networking, and feel free to leave a message or leave a comment uh, or on whatever service you're listening uh, to this. Um, you know, feel free to uh, comment there, and I will look at putting some of the uh, questions or suggestions for topics, uh, you know, we'll make them into some of our talks. So once again, I appreciate you listening and hopefully you have a little, uh, better understanding of what mindfulness may be and, and how we can start to work in our own lives. And I hope that you have a mindful day.